Greetings YouTube! This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 bringing you day two of Robot Week! As promised, each day the robots will get larger and larger and this time we are taking a look at Arachnid! Yes, it is finally time for her to have her reckoning. And since um, this toy is horrible and every good reviewer has already talked about her, it's time to move on to it's time to give it a little bit of an original spin and compare the Legends class figure that came out, uh, also known as the Cyberverse Legion, if you are, you know, too young to know what the word legends means. <laughs> <clears throat> some, you know, there, there's some context needed there. Like, if you're, if you're a Marvel figure collector, then Legends refers to the bigger figures. Well, in Transformers, Legends refers to smaller figures. That That's the context. Anyway, um, I bring it up because the Legends class figure is actually significantly superior to the deluxe version. And I don't think that ever happens. So, it's something worth noting. All right, so first let's let's talk about Arachnid's helicopter mode. Uh, this is her one mode that is not too bad. Um, I mean, she kind of has obvious foot syndrome in the back here, and her rotors, um, though they spin well, they kind of have this really dull lavender look, which is kind of lame. And um, she has an opening cockpit, and there's a little chair in there. Zoom in. Little chair. Chair. Nice chair. Uh, I wonder why they did this because one, Transformers almost never do this, especially in the Prime Deluxes, none of them do this. Um, two, Arachnid never once had a passenger ever in the show. And three, as you will see later, this completely compromises the figure's transformation. Um, although, the, one more nice little touch on the on the helicopter mode, she has a really tiny Decepticon symbol on her nose cone, which is picked out in purple. It's really small, but really detailed, and that's kind of nice. Of course, from underneath, you can pretty much just totally see her torso. And let's talk about that real quick. Okay, look at the undercarriage of the helicopter when I set it down. You see how it... it it's kind of smooth here, and then Arachnid's chest plate kind of makes a bump. If you compare it to the Legends class figure, you see that there's a much smoother transition. It, I mean, there's uh, there's that hole for the weapon in the front, but other than that, it's a smooth transition all the way from the tip of the nose down to where the chest plate is. It's better integrated. So. Yeah, even in even in helicopter mode, the Legends class figure manages to be a little bit better. Because it has a much bigger Decepticon symbol, too. Alright, let's talk about Arachnid's transformation. Gotta zoom out a bit. Okay. Um, the instructions tell you to take the rotors off, but... Uh-uh. I draw the line at parts forming. This transformation is already pretty bad, and I'm not I'm not going to make it even worse. Okay, so first you open this up and you tuck, tuck away that. Then with the rotor, this piece comes all the way out like this. And there's a little thing on top of the cockpit that you can peg into a slot. And then you kind of stand the helicopter up on its tail. Take these out. And you pull her legs open. Mm -hmm. And you separate these. Pop, pop. Okay, spread them out. And then her arms. They. This is always terrifying because um, this shoulder joint here, it pops down to place, and it always feels like it's gonna break. Then you separate out her arms, rotate her hand out. Uh, I very charitably call that an arm. It looks horrible. Uh, we'll, we'll get on that when I start to talk about the flaws of her robot mode. And then, pull out the other arm. And then, this is what really kills the figure. I'm gonna 
You fold these things down. Oh, by the way, the way she carries her rotors, um, this is technically accurate to the way she looked before she acquired her helicopter mode. But after she acquired her helicopter mode, she didn't carry her rotors like this anymore. She carried them three on each side. So this is accurate to original spider mode, but she doesn't have a spider mode. So fail. Okay. And finally, you do the head reveal. Um, now the thing is, on Transformers Prime, the deluxes are technically called revealers, and they all have um, an automorph gimmick, where you move something and the head automatically pops into place. Well, you push up on her helicopter kibble, and her head comes up. You push up on her backpack, making it stick out and become even more obvious to make her head come up. And then her head, although it's a very nicely sculpted head, again, there's always one little saving grace for Arachnid in either mode. In this case, it's that really nice face sculpt, and it's actually pretty well painted too. It really looks like Arachnid, except that there's a chair coming off the back of it. But it's pointless because she has this gigantic hunchback in the way. A hunchback which, despite having a transparent cockpit window, really kind of kills her light piping. So yeah, no no good light piping, the rotors don't even really stay in place very well, and uh, her head has very little articulation. It can basically cock to the side inquisitively, but it can't really turn anywhere. So yeah, she just... Eh. You know what? Um, Let's look at the other Transformers, the other Deluxes that I have. Um, see how their automorphs work. Okay, here's RC. You can see her head is tucked into her chest. You push her hips into place, her head pops up. And her head is very free. Her light piping, is, her light piping works. Her backpack is very well out of the way. And, you know, it works. It's, fantas it's a fantastic looking robot mode and the gimmick works. Take a look at Ratchet. He's mostly in robot mode. He has this one flap. You pull it up, and when you tuck it back, boom, his head pops up on a spring. His head can move. His backpack is not even kibble because it looks exactly like it does in the show except being the wrong color. Again, fantastic use of the gimmick. On Wheeljack, his doesn't even have a spring. It's a lever. As you, as you fold the chest down, you push this piece up into place. Up into place. Up in a place! Okay, yeah. You push it up into place, and as you form the chest, his head naturally comes up. No springs, even. That's, again, a fantastically done automorph. And why can't I not peg this into place? I think I must have... I think I shifted something out of position. Come on, Wheeljack, you like the... There you go. Yes. I, no. Uh, I'm working in front of the camera here. I, I think the arm is in the way. I think I moved the arm. What did I do? Oh, there's a problem. This has to be pushed up, not down. Me. Okay. Um, I did something wrong, but Wheeljack normally works very well. I don't know why I'm flubbing this time. Probably because of the time crunch. Okay, on Viacon, there's the rear flap of the... of the car. Well, look at that. Head rolls right into place as soon as you pull it down. Head even kind of moves around as you... as you put the kibble back into place, so it kind of looks like he's nodding. That's really cool. And no real backpack. It doesn't interfere with anything. And here's Soundwave. And you pull this out. The head sticks a little bit because of the crest, but boom, pops right into place. Then you fold the kibble back into place, and boom, perfectly show accurate. No, nothing that's not supposed to be there, and it looks fantastic. And um, in his case, the head's a little bit more restricted, but it can still move very well. So. This works so fantastically great. 
on everybody except her. What were they thinking? Well, I th I have three basic theories about what happened to her arachnid. Alright, so the first of my three theories is budget concerns. At the time that they made this figure, Hasbro was working on not only the Transformers Prime line, but also the beginning of the Fall of Cybertron line and finishing off Dark of the Moon. It could be with their budget spread in three different um, branches, they just ran out of, of uh, funding by the time they reached the Arachnid's wave, so they didn't have the budget they needed to work on her engineering. My second theory is that they were caught by surprise. They didn't expect Arachnid to be such a popular character. After all, she had like at least three episodes dedicated to her in season one alone. So they just so they didn't expect to have to make her until a couple of waves later later on. But high demand for a toy of the character forced them to make one as quickly as possible. And in this case, it's not that they didn't have the money; it's that they didn't have the time to work on her engineering. Number three is the evil conspiracy theory. The fact of the matter is that although toys of female characters sell well among adult collectors such as myself, uh, they don't sell very well to young boys because, as we recall from my April O'Neil review, uh, to uh, toys of female characters are considered by many parents to be toys for girls, not for boys. So by intentionally making the arachnid figure terrible, they could lower her sales figures even among adult collectors so that they could point to them as an excuse to not have to make female characters in the future, such as the G1 Accurate RC that I want so much. And yeah, that's, that's it. Let's, let's talk about robot mode itself. Um, she has all the basic Transformers articulation, but she can't really get any range out of them. For example, her legs, I can't really move her hips up because they instantly, and I mean instantly, hit her helicopter backpack kibble. It feels like it would be a good leg if only this thing wasn't in the way because it can't move any further than this. She has a thigh swivel, again, can't use it because it hits kibble. Uh, she has a 90 degree bend at the knee, which is the only joint that's not restricted. God, that's horrible. Uh, her shoulders, she has some in and out movement, although she doesn't get much out movement because, again, banging into that stupid backpack instantly. And although her elbow is technically double jointed, look at how horrible that is. That is one of... I can't believe that somebody refers to this as an arm with a straight face. I mean, it's just huge panels from the outside, and from the inside, it's... It doesn't look it doesn't look finished. You have this gigantic thing sticking up like a fin. If this folded down to cover this huge gap, then you might call it an arm. If this also folded up to cover that huge gap. The way and her hands, those big stupid holes. I'm not even showing her weapons. Her weapons just suck. They're way too big. They look absolutely nothing like anything she ever used in the show and uh yeah, not not even going to discuss them. And uh, I already talked about how her head's limited. This is bad. And the figure can barely stand. It's, it's ridiculously back heavy, despite the fact that she basically has two heels. Although the second heels don't really reach the ground very well. Yeah, so she can't really stand or pose or do anything. Which is a shame because she's one of my favorite characters. The only way that they really could have done the character Arachnid from the show any justice was if they made her a, a Voyager-sized triple changer figure. So that she would have her spider mode, her helicopter mode, and this robot mode. And she would have been a little bigger, so maybe they could have put room for more moving parts to get rid of this massive kibble! Okay, let's talk... Let's get this... Let's get this stupid thing out of the way. Let's talk about a much better figure. Uh, the Legion's class Arachnid, like I said, is better in just about every way. First, you, you move the rotor into this Y shape. Okay, you, you pop open some side panels here. Pop, pop. And they move back and hold the helicopter rotor in place so it doesn't spin anymore. Uh, you separate her legs. Boom. Very simple. Uh, this folds back and her head comes out 
and you, you fold her head back down, then you pull... Well, the rotors come off, but, you know, that's just move to her arm. Uh, you leave the head where it is for now, and you pull her arms out. Yeah. You move the arm out along the ball joints. It's actually a pretty clever swivel in there that makes the arms work. And then you, you fold the head back down onto her chest. And there we go. All right. Now, how is the Cyberverse Legion figure? Well, she looks a lot like the Deluxe in that she has a, a massive amount of kibble and a huge, a huge helicopter backpack. However, this is something that you would expect on a Legends class figure. I mean, same thing happened to RC. She has, a, she has a lot of backpack back there that's bigger than the figure's entire torso, but you know, on a Legends class, that's tolerable. And frankly, this figure looks better. It has it has better paint application. Look, her knees are picked out. The let me move the light a little bit closer so she'll be better lit. Yeah, she she has cohesive arms. I mean, there's no elbow joints, but a Legends class figure rarely has elbow joints. Uh, she has painted kneecaps. The Deluxe doesn't have that. She has painted toes, something else the Deluxe lacks. Her face looks just as good as the Deluxe's, despite being much smaller. I mean, that's a really nice face. I, I think they even picked out her lipstick. She looks really great. I mean, for a Legends class figure, yes, she looks good. Again, for a Legends class. In fact, it feels like the Deluxe was mostly this Legends class figure scaled upwards. They took a Legends class transformation and made it a deluxe. That's why it sucks so hard. And, um, oh, one more thing, scale. You know, in the show, Arachnid is taller than RC. And as you can see on the toy, ignoring backpack issues, um, Arachnid's head is up here. She's a full head taller than RC. But if you look at the deluxe toy, Here's Deluxe Class RC. Zoom out a little bit. Here's Deluxe RC. And here's Deluxe Arachnid. If you check it out, Arachnid's not really taller than RC. If I move her legs really close together, give her as much height as physically possible, she is just barely, barely a horn's length taller than RC. And she's supposed to be significantly taller than that. So even in robot mode, she's undersized, which, which is bad. I mean, Ratchet is hugely undersized in vehicle mode, but he's the right size in robot mode, and that's where it really counts. So for Arachnid to be undersized in robot mode, that just proves again she should have been a Voyager. So yeah, um, I would not own this figure if I if Arachnid was not one of my favorite characters, and I was resolved to collect as many female Transformers as possible. So yeah, that's that's Arachnid. Ugh. Um, this is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001, and let's hope that the. Uh, Day 3 of Robot Week gives us a better looking toy.